Nate is seen hanging from a cargo attached to another cargo that is being dislodged from a plane. He realizes he's in danger and struggles to find stable footing. But out of nowhere, he gets attacked by some men. Eventually, he gets pushed off again and is barely holding on when a man tries to shoot him. However, he sneaks up on the guy instead and sends him flying off. Just before the belt holding the cargo snaps, he manages to climb back up to the plane, only to get hit by a moving vehicle. He finds himself gasping as he presumably falls to his doom. Just then, a set of hands grab onto him, and it seems we've taken a little dive back to how it all started. Five years earlier, in Boston, on a certain night, Nate is hanging from a museum window with his older brother Sam holding onto him. Sam manages to pull him back up and starts scolding him for following him. Nate tries to make a fuss about coming with him, so Sam is left with no choice but to let him tag along. Sam then informs him that they're looking for the ancient explorer's exhibit and expects Nate to be quiet so they don't get caught. They reach the exhibit, and Nate reveals that it was made after the Magellan expedition, and he plans to steal it. Unfortunately, all does not go as planned, and the boys get caught. It appears that Sam has been getting into trouble lately, and this was the last straw. The sister tells the police to take Sam away, because, at this point, nothing can be done anymore. Nate tries to plead with her, but she tells him to go and say his goodbyes instead. Nate joins Sam in the room to find out that Sam is trying to run away instead. He tells Sam to take him, but Sam promises that he'll be back for him. Before Sam leaves, he gives Nate a ring he's always had to prove that he will not abandon him. Fifteen years have gone by, and Nate now works as a bartender in New York City, but does a side hustle of pickpocketing the wealthy patrons. One such patron is entertained by Nate that evening, after which he steals her bracelet without her realizing. After closing hours, Nate is met with a man named Victor Sullivan, who's looking to recruit Nate for a job that might have to do with stealing. Nate, however, declines and asks Victor to leave so he can close up. But after Victor leaves, Nate realizes that Victor has pickpocketed him without him realizing. And in place of the bracelet, he leaves his business card with Nate. After Nate closes from work, he tracks Victor down by tricking the security guard into getting the master keys. On entering Victor's apartment, he finds the map from 15 years ago that Sam was trying to steal. Victor tells him that he isn't surprised to see him as he feels Nate is interested. But Nate only came for the bracelet and anything valuable he could sell. Just as Nate is about to leave, Victor asks why the map was the first thing that piqued his interest, and Nate tells him that the map looks identical to the authentic one. Funny though, but it is the authentic one. And the moment Nate realizes that his interest is suddenly up the roof. They start discussing the history behind the expedition and the gold that was supposed to be a product of the expedition. Suddenly, Nate asks Victor how he knew about this exact story he's been dreaming of as a kid. Victor then reveals that he knew Nate's brother. He tells Nate that he and Sam are no longer in contact, as Sam just decided to ghost him. Nate then remembers that he has also stopped receiving postcards from Sam. Apparently, after helping him steal Juan Sebastian Elcano's diary that will point them to the hidden gold, Sam vanished. Hoping to find Sam, Nate agrees to join Victor. However, before they can embark on their journey, they have to get their hands on a cross at an upcoming auction. But it's not just any cross. It's a key and a clue linked to the Magellan crew. Victor drafts a plan where Nate will kill the power during the auction, while he's handling taking the cross while no one's looking. For the next few days, Nate trains himself while doing his research on the Magellan crew. When he's finally ready, he tells Victor that he'll be needing a suit, a handheld metal sheet cutter, and a cat. On the day of the auction, they both get ready to attend when Victor asks what the cat is for. Nate then tells him that the cat's for him as he seemed way too lonely. There's pretty much nothing Victor can do about it, so they both head out for the occasion. At the entrance, Victor hands Nate AirPods so they can communicate. As they head out, they spot Santiago Moncada, 
the last descendant of the Moncada family, who financed the Magellan expedition. Apparently, Moncada is at the auction solely for the cross as well. Inside the auction hall, the Du spots Joe Braddock, leader of Moncada's mercenaries, and surprisingly, Victor's ex. Unfortunately, Braddock is quite suspicious of Victor's presence at the auction and decides to keep a close eye on him. When the auction begins, a painting is first put out, during which Nate tries to get into the control room to cut the power line. While he's in there, he gets ambushed by one of Braddock's men, causing him to miss the cue to cut power. Victor is then forced to actually bid money to prevent Moncada from winning the bid. Meanwhile, Nate is still finding it hard to shake off the huge man. Victor then asks him to cause a distraction or anything to divert the minds of the attendees. So Nate does just that, giving Victor the opportunity to snatch the cross. Nate is conflicted as he realizes that Victor is just going to ditch him. So he runs. Unfortunately, he runs into Braddock, but because he's dressed as a worker, he turns the security on her and manages to escape. He returns to the car to find Nate seated and waiting. Nate then tells him off for trying to ditch him back there, but Victor reveals the cross, so all is forgiven. But Nate asks to hold on to the cross because he doesn't trust Victor. Victor then asks the driver to take them to Tetterboro, but turns to ask Nate if he's still interested in joining him. And we all know the answer to that cause Nate's always ready for adventures. The duo then heads to Barcelona that evening. During their flight, Nate goes through Elcano's journal to decipher where the key can be used. Finding a picture of a tree, he concludes that they have to find a tree. And that's when Victor asks him to look out the window to see that Barcelona is covered with a lot of trees. Upon landing, they meet up with Chloe Fraser, an acquaintance of Victor's who didn't expect to meet Nate. And Nate, on the other hand, is also confused about why they would be meeting up with her. And that's when Victor reveals that there's another cross that Chloe has. But Chloe doesn't want to be partners with them, especially not with Victor, whom she refers to as a liar and manipulator who won't hesitate to betray his friends. She leaves them, and Victor realizes she's taken the cross. He asks Nate to check his bag and they realize that she did steal the second cross from Nate while he wasn't looking. They immediately chase after her until she gets to her car and tries to drive away. Nate then tries to convince her that she needs someone who can interpret the journal so she can know where and how the keys are meant to be used. But she's quite stubborn, so Victor tells Nate to let her go. Chloe immediately realizes that taking the cross and fleeing is actually of no use to her if she doesn't know where it is applied. She stops her car and agrees to work with the guys. Nate then reveals that the crosses were originally made to stand on altars, so the tree in the journal refers to Santa Maria del Pai Church. At the church, Chloe goes to talk to the nuns to see if they can get inside. Meanwhile, Victor warns Nate about her, saying she isn't to be trusted but Nate doesn't see why yet. Chloe returns and informs them that they're having a midnight mass so they can come back the next day. Meanwhile, at Moncada Foundation Hospital, Moncada confronts his father for wanting to give away the family's fortune. His father then tells him that their family wealth is dipped in blood and he wants nothing to do with it. After failing to convince his father, he arranges for Braddock to eliminate his father. Meanwhile, Chloe, Victor, and Nate are resting at a house where Chloe and Victor seem to frequent. Chloe tells Nate that she found the other cross by accident and didn't even know it was a key until she met Victor. That night, when Nate goes to find more drinks, Chloe tells Victor that she figured Nate was Sam's little brother. She then asks if he has told Nate what happened to Sam yet, and Victor tells her that he's not telling him yet. Nate returns with a bottle of red wine, but he doesn't hear their conversation and joins them. The next day, the trio returns to the church, locating two keyholes at the altar, just as Nate deduced. Nate and Chloe stick the keys in and ask Victor which way the journal says to turn the key. Victor then tells them to turn it clockwise, almost causing his own demise. The duo then asks why the clockwise direction didn't work if that's what the journal says, and Victor confesses that he took a wild guess 
as they are about to yell at him. He then breaks it to them that at least now they know the right direction to turn the keys. On turning the keys, they find a hidden crypt behind the church. Another clue from the journal also states to trust in your fellow men. One should go to heaven and the other to hell, which was interpreted by Nate as the doors with the symbols they had discovered. Nate decides to go with Chloe down the hell door and asks Victor to follow the heaven door, but Victor disagrees again, pointing out to Nate not to trust Chloe. Victor then requests for his cross in case he will be needing it up there. To settle things, Nate installs a GPS tracker on Victor's phone and links it to his so they can both keep track of their locations. Nate and Chloe head in and the route takes them to a club where they're forced to blend in after realizing that they're being followed by Braddock's men. Regardless, the men attack them. Nate then causes a distraction, which buys Chloe enough time to unlock the next door and escape with Nate. Meanwhile, Victor is carefully following the route from above. Nate and Chloe, on the other hand, find a trap door, which they go ahead to open since the key fits, but instead of opening the lid, the crypt begins to slowly flood with water. Nate then realizes the meaning behind the clue from the journal. That means they'll have to trust Victor and hope he opens his side to set them free. Otherwise, they're goners. Unfortunately, Victor has run into a small problem preventing him from getting to his own lock. He's forced to fight with Braddock, eventually subduing her and unlocking his side of the puzzle. Meanwhile, Nate pushes the lid open and gasps for air, then realizes that Chloe is still underwater. He immediately dives back in and saves her before they both continue. The duo then finds another door that would require both keys, but Victor is reluctant to pass down his key. But to prove Chloe wrong, he does it anyway. The duo then enters yet another crypt with massive turns, which turned out to be full of salt and the real map to the treasure. With both keys in their possession and the map, Chloe holds Nate at gunpoint and reveals to him that he shouldn't trust Victor as he doesn't know what really happened to Sam. Nate tries to get more info out of her, but she knocks him out and steals everything. A while later, Victor wakes Nate up, but Nate is only interested in knowing what went down with him and Sam. When Victor reveals that Sam was shot the day they went to get the journal, and by implication, Victor leaves him to die because he feels getting the journal is more important. And the only reason Victor didn't tell him this is that he knew Nate wouldn't have agreed to come. Nate gets angry and tells Victor that he's on his own. It is soon revealed that Chloe has been working for Moncada all this time. Moncada also places her in charge of the operation, causing Braddock to hate her even more. Meanwhile, Nate finally comes to a resolution. He tells Victor that he's going to finish what his brother started by finding the gold. But after that, he and Victor will have to go their separate ways. And Victor agrees with the deal. Moncada, Chloe and Braddock's team prepare to depart in a cargo plane to find the treasure. Nate and Victor then manage to sneak a ride with the cargo. On reaching the drop zone, they prepare to discard the cargo. Meanwhile, Braddock takes Moncada's life and becomes the new boss, while Chloe runs for her life. Braddock then asks them to look for Chloe, during which Nate and Victor steal the map and try to escape. However, Nate decides to confront Braddock, the woman who shot Sam. A fight ensues while Victor parachutes out with the map, and we're back to how it started. Nate and Chloe are ejected from the plane thanks to the red car landing in the Philippines. Nate gets them a room under Victor's name where they can rest and dry their clothes. They also discover that the treasure's real location is not what the map says, as this whole gold hunting has been like someone deliberately crafted the whole situation. The duo then try to figure out the correct location, but Chloe eventually goes to bed. Later that night, Nate finally figures out the cryptic message his brother has been sending. Afterwards, he pens down the wrong coordinates and leaves them on the table to test Chloe's loyalty. The next day, Nate realizes that he is right about Chloe, so he takes the right coordinates he had hidden in a bottle to find the Magellan ships. After discovering the ship's location, he meets Victor, who has been following him. Sadly, Braddock is still chasing them, 
So Nate and Victor have to hide as her crew takes the ships away by helicopter. While getting away, Victor takes control of one of the helicopters, and Braddock sends another to catch them. Nate fights off Braddock's hired soldiers and uses one of the ship's cannons to take down the second helicopter. When Braddock corners, Nate Victor tosses a bag of treasure at her, and she ends up in the sea, where the ship crashes on her. The Philippine Navy shows up, and Nate and Victor manage to escape with a few pieces of treasure Nate grabbed, leaving Chloe with nothing. Meanwhile, Sam, who was thought to be dead, is in prison and writes Nate a postcard, asking him to be careful. In a post credit scene, Nate meets someone working for Roman, offering a ring for a Nazi map. This person tries to betray Nate, but Victor comes to his rescue. They get away but are trapped by an unknown figure. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 2022 movie Uncharted by Naughty Dog, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. It stars Tom Holland as Nathan Drake and Mark Wahlberg as Victor Sullivan, with Sophia Alley, Tati Gabriel, and Antonio Banderas. So, who else was shocked to see that Sam is still okay? Let us know in the comments below with hashtags in America.